Tilt shift. It's a cool effect. Here it is on Brisbane's Brown Snake, a world map, and my demo. Let's make it for the Godot game engine. It's not the most complicated shader of all time. Blur shaders are a dime a dozen. So that's easy enough. All we need to do is split the effect across the screen. In order to implement this shader, we'll add a control node to our scene on a canvas layer. The texture rect set to the size of our screen. We'll also need to add a texture to that rect. Doesn't matter what's on it though. Under material, add a new shader material and add a shader to it. Now that we have that, we just need a way to split the effect and keep it on the top and bottom of the screen. Built into Godot's lovely shader language is the UV constant or a canvas layer, which is a number between 0 and 1, and it refers to a position on the screen or texture. We can use this to find a position and include it. We'll declare the variable limit that we can use in the editor with a range of 0 to 0 0.5 and set it to 0.15. We'll also declare a variable to control the blur. All of this will be done in the fragment shader. In the fragment, we'll write a condition to control the level of blur. If uv.y is less than the limit, we'll write a texture to the screen that will be blurred. Also, if it is greater than one minus the limit, we'll do the exact same thing. You can see that where the limit is, there is white. We can remove the white by changing the color setting after else to alpha. Next, we need to implement some easing on the line where the limit ends. Since it's a solid line right now, and it's very obvious to us. We don't want that. We can add the variable intensity, which will be set between 0 and 0 0.5. In each if condition, add a float hold step, where we will use a smooth step function. I'm not exactly sure what this does since the documentation is not really clear, but I'm pretty sure it's interpolating between the first and the second variable based on the third. Either way, you can use this to interpolate between the UV and the limit based on the intensity variable, then add this to the alpha like so. The intensity variable works best when right below the limit. This way the line is not visible because it is being blended between the alpha. If it is too low though, I find that the effect looks more like a dirty screen, which is not good either. I found it a bit difficult to tweak after this, so I add a debug flag to help dial in the settings. Add another condition to the shader after the assignment of the screen texture. I find the debug helpful when working in 3D, since when you're looking at a canvas layer, you can't see what's behind it. If you're working in 2D though, you may not need this and you don't have to include it, but I find it helpful. Now we can clearly see where the blur is going to be and the easing that is being applied to it. Just make sure to uncheck this before loading the game. So that's it, fake tilt shift. Why do we need this? Well, Godot has a built-in depth of field for near and far, but on certain angles, this is not useful for producing the same look. DOF far might still work, but near specifically blurs things out close to the camera, so on a top-down angle it won't really work. In 3D, at the angle I'm using, I use a depth of field far, but I have the shader on the lower part of the screen to simulate something closer to a tilt shift. In 2D, there is no depth of field on the camera, so you would need to write a shader like this in order to produce something on an image, like on a world map or an isometric city builder game. And that's it, there's not really much else to it. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment about your love for shaders. Thanks for watching.